Yeah, evening, Brother Andrew, evening, family. It's lovely to be back. Um, and that week, it's amazing how quickly it all goes, actually. How are you feeling, sis? I'm feeling very, very good, um, Brother Andrew. And I just want to say that um, I really love that what you've done this evening, um, allowing us to, to remember and to say thank you to our black heroes and also to remind us that their courage and their strength lies within us because we come from the same place that they've come from. So the courage um, and the wisdom and the skill and talent they have and their pain lies within us as a next generation to drive it forward. So thank you very much for giving us that moment to oh, remember. Thank you, thank you, sister. Lady Adele, I don't want to hold you back any further, my queen. It's, all, it's, it's, it's your time to really educate us. I'm going to stop the share one second. Um, um, I'm going to make sure that you can share yourself. But Lady Adele, we can't wait for you and Reverend Shop today, beloved. Um, you know, I don't know what angle you're going to come from this week, but you can share now, sister. Nice, and, you. Um, you know, please educate us today. Educate us. Well, Brother Andrew, we're going to finish off some work on the um, Hegelian dialectic that we were looking at um, for the last couple of, of weeks, just to just to actually take it to its, its conclusion for us to leave and make up our own minds on it. So family, so we started looking at this topic, um, the Hegelian dialectic, but I've used the term for this week, controlled opposition, because that's another term for it. And what we learned last week is that um, the Hegelian dialectic is a philosophical theory that states that two opposing ideas can be seen as true at the same time. And today we translate that as the ability to resolve these two opposing perspectives at, and quote, a higher level of truth. But that higher level of truth is defined to meet the agenda of a group of people, not necessarily ourselves. It's a philosophy that takes a, that creates problem that leads to reaction to produce a solution. Also, that term is thesis, antithesis um, to synthesis. It's two ways of saying the same thing. And it is now the most effective way to create a crisis that cause us as a people to cry out to our leaders for help. One of the plays that we see being used throughout history by the controllers to manipulate the masses is their interpretation of the Hegelian dialectic. Now, this is loosely translated as problem, reaction, solution, order out of chaos. But this is an 18th century theory uh, that basically says the human mind cannot understand anything unless it is split into opposites. And then the discussion that's in the middle would be the synthesis or the solution. But the problem that we're seeing today is that this theory is being exploited to manipulate the population. It's kind of the left-right divide, divide and conquer, left versus right, black versus is white, keeping all of us fighting amongst ourselves. So while we're divided, they are conquering us by providing us with their solution, their answer to our problems. And uh, basically what we're going to see is that conflict can only be resolved by some global authority, some outside authority, rather than our own sovereignty, our innate sovereignty. So global society today, that's all of us today, we all now live within this Hegelian dialectic model. Um, it's the most powerful philo philo philosophy of our time, and I would probably say of all time, of this modern Western time. But we need to, as a people, we need to be able to see, hear, recognize, and understand how it is manipulating us into believing that we are affecting change for the betterment of our lives. Ooh, so this man here, Mob Deep, and I want to say thank you very much to the brother who in the chat last week sent a message and others would have seen it. Mob Deep, he re released his last album called The Hegelian Dialectic. And he released it in 2017, actually four years ago tomorrow. And um, it's an album that you can't buy anymore. You can't even download it anymore. And when I looked it up on Amazon, they're asking up to, up to 500 pounds for a copy of this album. And I say to myself, why is it 
that this man's last album cannot be got, yet his earlier ones can. You see, Mob Deep had an understanding on what, of what was going on around him. And he actually said in the interview that we just saw a clip of, that it's time for us to graduate to the next school of thinking. And I was quite impressed by the way he said to the next school of thinking, not the next level of thinking. Now this leads us on to another thing. It's important, I would say, that we don't dismiss conspiracy theories outright because they are a result of one of two things. One, a conspiracy theory can come about because someone's been reflecting or researching a situation or circumstance and come to a realization or an understanding that something is not quite right or something is missing. Another reason for conspiracy theory is that it's designed to distract or mislead us. But whichever of those two reasons it is, the theory, the conspiracy theory, does come from a place of actuality that we may not always be able to get to the root of. So the closest that we have actually to the Hegelian dialect is this man here, Karl Hempel's law, um, which is just simplified as cause to effect particularly in relation um, to science. But cause to effect is really about specific in, um, situations that are not necessarily related to each other. So watering the flower, you get a plant, is not related to another cause effect, so, such as get a toothache, you go to the dentist. So cause to effects tend to be isolated um, situations. However, um, Hegel, um, if he was to describe his philosophy as a law, we could call it the journey to freedom. But he said, um, history is a logical development of the previous stage of history, which is always moving towards freedom or moving towards utopia. And he saw history as having moved over time from a state of lawlessness to strict hierarchy, and to democracy across the ages. And we're now in the stage of democracy. So to, to explain this just a little bit, I'm gonna just use an example of a farmer. So in the age of lawlessness or the problem, um, a farmer, for example, he would plant whatever crops he wanted to plant, but then others would come along and steal his crops. And so what the farmer would say is, you know what, next year I'm not going to go for all this hard work to plant crops to have it stolen. I'm just going to go out and steal it as well. And so we have this lawlessness. But as time, as a result of incidences like this, we then get into a state of strict hierarchy, our reaction to this problem. So now what the farmer does, he plants what he likes and he pays a protection tax. He pays a tax to the landowner. Um, for, a, for a protection. So what happens now? Anybody caught thieving, they're either killed or they're imprisoned without a trial. Planting increases, thieving decreases. And then as time goes on, we reach where we are today, which is the age of democracy, which is the solution. The farmer plants his crops, he pays a tax, he pays insurance, and law protects the farmer and the thieves. So democracy, the solution to this democracy has combined some of the strengths from the state of lawlessness and the state of strict hierarchy. This becomes the solution. Now, slavery is also built on this structure because the elite made it work for them through the master-slave connection. And Hegel talks about, if you remember last week, I mentioned how he was watching how the slaves worked um, um, in um, the Caribbean and he used that and saw this master slave um, relationship and he sees the democracy where the savage is now liberated um, from his savagery so that's where the democracy came in for the slave and this happened because the master was able to do that so slavery was built on this Hegelian dialectic approach so what happens is we have a problem a problem was, uh, is created, then there's a reaction to the problem. And as a result of resolving the problem in the reaction, we get a solution. But what happens, that solution now becomes the new problem because it's not quite good enough. And so that problem re re requires a new reaction. And as a part of that reaction, looking at the two of them, we get a new solution. And that solution, which creates a new problem or thesis, requires an antithesis, 
and then we get this synthesis, this solution. And Hegel says, life and history is like this. This circle will keep going round and round indefinitely, getting closer to freedom, but never actually reaching it. However, today, the Hegelian dialectic or controlled opposition, which is its new definition, is used to fulfill the, um, the agenda for those in power, those that we call um, the elite. And to achieve this, to achieve the solution that is desired, relies and thrives on instability, which is promoted through our fear. So fear of losing our home, fear of losing our job, fear of losing our finances or getting or being harmed from others or creating differences so that we're in argument with each other. And these fears make it easy for us to be conditioned. And the, the best way to uh, create instability, because instability is what, what is needed here. That's what they want. They want instability uh, because when uh, people are unstable, uh, so they fear they're going to lose their homes, they fear they've got nowhere to live, they fear they've not got enough money coming in, we fear that, um, uh, that strangers are going to hurt us, uh, we fear people who look different to us. So we're, we're, we're very easy con to condition when we don't live from the soul, when we don't live from the truth of ourselves, the basket of our mind and our emotions become very, very easy to condition. All I have to do is cause you a small bit of pain and then that part of you will stay reactive. You know, and if you if you fed things all of your life, not taught your own history, um, and the basic problem with this is the colonial history of of these islands. So there you can see um, th this philosopher here is explaining that situation. And what was interesting is when he used terms like the truth of self. And um, if you don't know the truth of self, or you don't know your soul, um, you will get caught up. Um, in this, this manipulation and technique. And he talks about the pain. And we know today young people don't expect to have any pain. They don't understand the importance of suffering in character building and in driving change. And this is something we need to work with our young people to appreciate and understand the value of, of pain and not to run away from it or um, getting to states of un being unable to manage themselves. But there are other forms of manipulation in order to allow us to be easily conditioned. And things such as um, confusion, um, not being clear on what's going, um, going on when information is not passed to us clearly. Worldview poisoning, what does that mean? It's about conditioning the way we as people view ourselves as, as humanity and view our nature and we, how we value our, our own selves. So, manipulation to change how we see that. Divide and conquer, um, using the differences between us to create infighting. Control of the mass media, we see it, we see it all the uh, time. Control of food and medicines, what we eat, what medicines we take and our access and the availability of them. And the DHR factor, which controls us. And that means denial, hassle and ridicule and being afraid um, of denial or suffering hassle or being ridiculed puts us or traps us in a state of inactivity to avoid these things we become inactive and then symbolism that reinforce ideologies um, in our subconscious some of the symbols that we see in our large corporations and you will remember that i went through this quote last week a definition the modern definition of what lies behind the modern Hegelian dialectic. It is where the ruling elite create a problem, anticipating in advance the reaction of us in the population to that crisis that they have created and thus conditioning us to want a change. And so when we are properly conditioned, the desired agenda of that elite is then presented as the solution. So when, we, when we're conditioned enough and we've cried for the change, we need it so much, the solution may not necessarily be the solution that best suits us, but we're so desperate for a solution, so reactionary that we accept the solution that's given. And the solution they present is not actually intended to solve the problem, but to serve or to wait in the wings as the basis for a new problem or to exa exacerbate um, the existing one. And when the newly created problem reaches a boiling point, 
it becomes a foundation for us to cry out for change yet again. And it is this process which is repeated over and over all the time, moving us towards whatever endpoints the, um, those in control, those in power have in mind. And so today, controlled opposition is not following the natural laws of social or, or, or historical evolution as intended by Hegel. It is now um, engineered with a, within a clearly defined agenda. So how does this look in practice today? Well, for instance, here, here, an agenda. What is this agenda here? The agenda here is that those in power want to centralize that power for themselves. So the problem that is created is the engineering of fear of terrorist threat, whether that's real or perceived. So terrorist threats are a problem that um, is created to get a certain reaction from us. And that reaction is we need more police on the ground in order to protect us and to protect our society. So for the agenda, the solution is the removal of some of our freedoms and the transfer of power from the many to the few. And we don't realize that this is what's um, going on. So the desired solution cannot be introduced unless those being manipulated, and that's us, takes the side that advances the predetermined agenda. And we need to be conscious of this at all times. We may not be in a position where we can make change or make things different, but we need to be aware of it because it impacts on our behaviors and our attitudes. So what about private control? Another agenda is private control. Big corporations such as the pharmaceutical companies and the food companies, they want to have the global monopoly and domination of all goods and hold governments hostage to them. So they institute a problem of capitalism. So capitalism is where the entrepreneurs own the business and we as the consumers control the business because we, um, we do the spending. But if the prices go up or the, food, or the um, products get hard to get, we, the consumers, say we can't manage this, we can't get what we need. And so the reaction, sorry, that is created is socialism. So the government says, okay, we will own all the businesses, you can get it from us now, and we will control any business outside of, of, of our, our control. And so we as a people feel, yes, the government's got it in control. But what's happened is that the private corporations have this solution or corporations where the entrepreneurs can continue to own the business. The governments are allowed to control the business but the corporations still control the government. And here you can see how large corporations entrap not just us, but they entrap the government who is supposed to represent us. Um, Hegelian dialectic or opposed op oppositional opposition um, also affects global financial um, control. Here we, we know that the elites want to control all the global um, finances. And so the problem they create is the federal reserves or federal reserve banks. Money as computer numbers that are manipulated to raise real money affecting um, stock markets, affecting inflation, making it difficult to buy our houses or to sell our houses, for example. So they create this problem so that there is a reaction so that banks have to get hard currency. We can't let the banks fail. If people want their money, we've got to have that, um, we've got to have that access to it. So, uh, so we now feel safe that our monies are safe in the banks. But the solution is let's now get out digital currency. Let's get people buying with their real money, money that doesn't necessarily exist and we hold on to real wealth. So global financial control um, is a very powerful tool that affects everybody from governments right down. And this is where I just want to look um, for a few moments at the global pandemic. Now the global pandemic, whether we consider it to be deliberate or whether it's not, um, has provided a new agenda um, for managing global affairs to control us, the people, and to control governments, and to control the financial markets and nations and health and so on. So the problem that we have 
is this global virus. Intentional and released into the, to the world, we don't know. It could be a natural um, virus that's come about, we don't know, but it, it is a problem. And our reaction as people is that, that people are sick and people are dying. And so our reaction is government, you need to provide a cure for us. But the solution is many. And I'm just gonna go through some of the solutions that have arisen or that are taken advantage of the global pandemic that we have, this controlled opposition. So I just want to have a look at some of those solutions. So the first set of people able to take um, advantage of the virus is, a, is global capitalism. They are taking control. And the problem is, is that, that they have now been able to um, create is um, a global financial crisis because the government is now locking down their economies. And as a result of that, the reaction to that is that as people, we are unemployed, we become isola um, isolated because we can't move around and we make demands on our governments. So the economy closes down, our reaction is to make um, demands and the solution is the resetting of capitalism. We're not at the virus yet, it's the, re uh, uh, the vaccination yet, it's resetting of capitalism. And what is that? It's a country's trade and industry and it being controlled by private owners for their own profit. So it provides an opportunity to reset capitalism. Another area where um, the, the global pandemic has provided solution is about restricted freedoms. So what is the problem created now is global hysteria. Now sickness and death, fear mongering is leading, has created global hysteria. And we see that in the news all the time, the way it's reported, uh, the, the message that come out, it's set up a state, state of global hysteria. And what is our reaction to that? We want something and we want something to happen now to protect us from the deadly disease. Lady Adele, you're killing it today. You're ki Brothers and sisters, are you listening to Lady Adele today? Please carry on sister. Thank you, brother Andrew. And so the solution for the re uh, solution here is that the government suspends our liberties to provide to us a sense of safety. So we can't travel, um, we can't get into education, we can't make contact with each other, a police state is coming, you know, the army wants to go and support schools with the vaccination, employment suffers, and we can't even go and have places of worship. So the restricted freedoms, which is one of the solutions created by the pandemic, also produces a suspension on our liberties. Another area where the COVID um, uh, uh, pandemic has, um, um, has, um, has taken advantage is on the assault of our minds. The problem created here is this endless fear mongering um, and, uh, messages by the mainstream um, and, and by the media, um, by, by fake news, um, the fear, fear mongering that we hear on the news where you know it reports you know the number of deaths after 28 days of taking a covid test but we because we we're so um, in a state of hysteria and panic we only hear the figure and the word um, um, covid and we think it's all one one thing but there's other things going on as well so what is the reaction what is our reaction to that we are confused um, and we're confused and the media takes advantage um, of those responses. Um, and so there is misinformation that is fed in. And so what is the solution to that? Um, censorship. So it's, um, there's a squash or there's an end put to any balanced debate. Um, propaganda is produced, messages are censored. Um, so anybody that um, wants to contradict what the government is saying about uh, the pandemic um, are targeted and their social networks and medias are, are, are shut down. And Brother Andrew, you were speaking to us a few weeks ago after the COVID debates 
on the hidden truth itself. You were struggling to be able to um, operate as normal because everything seemed to be cutting down and blocking you out. So assault on our mind, and because that is that's the agenda of the moment, it through this um, problem and then reaction is allowed censorship. And we've accepted that because we feel that it's protecting us or helping us um, recover from the anxiety that we're going through. Another area or, or, or group that has benefited and um, one of the solutions to the whole COVID um, a, a pandemic is surveillance and tracking. That's the agenda, surveillance and tracking. So what is the problem that is created? It's the collapse of businesses. So many businesses that have collapsed because people cannot go to them, cannot visit them, cannot trade with them. So what is our reaction or what is the reaction to that? It's the misleading reporting of, of infections and, and deaths that continue to frighten us as people. And we continue to push um, demands on the government um, for the protection of ourselves and our others so we can get back to a normal life. So what is the solution? The solution is track and trace. It's surveillance um, um, in the guise of providing safety in exchange for our freedom. Um, um, movements to long-term planning of, of, of uh, digital tracking, biometrics. Um, and we know this is something that's been wanted for young offenders to have the, the biometric tracking of them and chips and how we travel. So surveillance and tracking have benefited um, from the current um, um, pandemic. But we've, we've colluded with that because as businesses have collapsed um, and we have seen the infections and death rates go up and we want something done about it, we say, yes, we're happy with track and trace um, and biometrics. And the last one and the most obvious one um, is the vaccination. And what is the problem created? Is that the, our national infrastructures have shut down in so many different ways. We can't go to school, we can't go to church, hospital, um, if you have regular hospital appointments or dentist appointments, they've been held back or you can't get them. Millions more and more um, people are isolated and we're all fearful of the, the unknown. We're reminded of this on a daily basis. So the problem that is put in front of us is that the national infrastructure cannot manage anymore. So what is the reaction? It is our cry for a return to normalcy, to have our business open and to return to the way of life we had before. So that's how we rebut that. And so the solution that's been given to us is this unproven vaccination. We're told that for life to get back to normal, we must be um, vaccinated. We know it's an unproven vaccination, but it's a risk and a chance that we have to take. So the solution of, 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 of the pandemic is um, ultimately to reach this new normal, this new normal of how employment is gonna work, this new normal of our, our, us accepting um, surveillance, the new normal of accepting stop and search, our new normal of restriction of um, freedom of speech, the new normal that mental anxiety and in health is going to increase and need a, a new set of medical treatment and a new normal that our travel will be um, restricted. So the Hegelian dialectic, which is now bound by an agenda which is designed um, ahead of us, which already has put the problem into motion, anticipating or engineering how we are going to react leads to a solution that we as a people think we have um, we have created or we have put in place but really that decision had already been taken. So we must not take anything at face value. Um, this quote here, nothing in the world stands by itself. Every object is a link to an endless chain and is thus connected with all the other links. Investigation of the forms of connection is the primary task of cognition. And so I wanted to look um, at, that, uh, at the definition of cognition. Cognition is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience and our senses. And that includes common sense, 
insight, foresight, hindsight, and including our history. So I'm not suggesting that we are to be skeptics and cynics, but we are to be reflective. You see, like the elite who think generations in advance, they know the agenda, they know the problem, the reaction and the solution before they even bring it for us, bring it to us, we need to do the same if we are to prepare our young people to be able to operate and understand how this works. Um, we need to look forward as much as we look backwards. And there is an impact to every decision we take. So we need to be conscious of the decisions we are being engineered to take, even if we can't necessarily do anything about it. The use of Hegelian dialectic is a deficit model built on conflict and fear. It is used to lead others like us to be led as the Pied Piper leads for the benefit of the elite to achieve their higher level of truth. So I'm saying brothers and sisters, it must become our purpose in 2021, the year of spiritual action to consider and act on our higher level of truth and make sure we are acting, thinking and working together individually, as families, as a community, and as a global family, as we do on a platform such as this. So Brother Andrew, that's my look into the Hegelian dialectic. It has been a wonderful experience. It has changed how I see things, how I view things, how I text views. Um, yes. So that's, oh, I was off, the camera was off. Lady Adele. You had, see, you, I, brother and sister, you got to understand, I had no idea where she was going today. It's not like I know what she's going to do. She does not consult me at all. Mm -hmm. She does it. And brothers and sisters, Adele, master teaching, man. That is the time. That is, that is the time, brothers and sisters. And you know the show's only going to get hotter. Mm -hmm. Reverend Shock is now waiting to come on. But Lady Adele, oh, my God, you killed the game. You bodied the bag. Jeez. And I will say, I will say, Lady Adele, stay on screen for one second, yes, sister. Yes. Stay on screen for one second, because brothers and sisters, before Do Reverend Shock, who's the keynote speaker today, comes on. Before Reverend Shock comes on, brothers and sisters, brothers, you've got to understand this. You've got to understand this, brothers and sisters. You've got to stay woke, man. You've got to fight. Look, look, brothers and sisters, you lot don't know where we're going to take this. Someone just put on the chat group, Sister Adele. They're splitting up families with opposing views. You've got a situation people don't know whether to take the jab because then I can I can get a job or or go to work or or fly on holiday. I mean, people are going through trauma right now. Okay, so That's the plan. it's the plan. We are going to be going. The problem is you don't know this. I'm only announcing it tonight. Myself and Lady Adele, we're going to be doing a hidden truth breakdown on this movie. I know 99% of you have never even seen this movie. Lady Adele, Lady, look, what, what's your views on this movie? Don't do no breakdown yet. Just tell the brothers and about this movie. So brothers and sisters, what I would say, it was an incredible movie. When I watched it the first time, I didn't quite get it, but it was spinning around in my head. So I don't know if anybody has seen Bamboozled, um, but that's, um, that's um, a film that's very close to this one, done a very long time ago. But sorry to bother you, is a, for me, it's going to be one of my top 10 movies for sending a message to us about how we operate in systems. It's the Hegelian dialectic right there. Did you hear our role within it. Did you say that one more time, because maybe the people at the back didn't hear you just now, sister. I'm saying, Brother Andrew, that sorry to bother you, this film is the Hegelian dialectic in action for us as a black people. Jeez! Brothers and sisters, this film. Um, how many times should they watch it, Adele, before we do our breakdown? Well, I would, I would say at least two, because if anybody's like me, you watch the film for the first time, more on the entertainment factor, the colours, the actors, and that sort of thing, and you lose some of the message. But the second time round, when you've got that side of your right brain out of it, and your left brain starts to listen and see the messages that are there, and those small details, 
um, and you start looking at every sign, the road sign, what people are wearing, and just little things, just the posters on the wall, it changes the movie um, completely. All right, brothers and sisters, this is where they're taking us. Those of you who've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If you're confused what's happening today, brothers and sisters, look at that image, because that is what they are turning the masses into. And you notice I didn't use no color line. 85% of white people will be turned into this. 85% of people of color, the aim is to turn us into this. I'm not even gonna break it down tonight. Wait till we announce the breakdown, brothers and sisters. And it's gotta get even more hotter. It's gonna get sticky. Because the next breakdown we're gonna do, we, we're gonna announce it soon. Who is this, brothers and sisters? We are gonna be doing a hidden truth on this movie. Oh my gosh. Oh, does anyone know what movie this is? Oh, someone just said it. Come on, man. Bob and Leo Mohammed done a masterclass on this back in the day. We're going to be going. In, if, you, if you want to understand what's going on today, you've got to get into Animal Farm. We are living right now through George Orwell. He predicted all of this, brothers and sisters. So very soon, we're going to be doing a hidden truth breakdown on Sorry to Bother You and Animal Farm. If you missed that, then don't talk to me. Just don't talk to me, because you're not serious. You are not serious about what's happening right now. Oh my God, we've got Reverend Shock coming up next, brothers and sisters. Reverend Shock coming on next, and I, I, I can't wait. So brothers and sisters, just two minutes before Reverend Shock comes in, because this coming Friday, this coming Friday, brothers and sisters, we're going metaphysical. We are going, met Sister China, my beautiful daughter, make sure you put the link up for this one. Brothers and sisters, this is where we're going this Friday. This is where we're going this Friday. Stephen Strange. Might I offer you some advice? Forget everything that you think you know. You're a man looking at the world through a keyhole. You've spent your life trying to widen it. Your work saved the lives of thousands. What if I told you that reality is one of many? I don't believe in fairy tales about chakras or energy or the power of belief. You wonder what I see in your future? Possibility. Why are you doing this? There are other ways to save lives. So much you don't know. Shock, where are you, my king? All the way from Los Angeles. You don't know my big brother. What's going on, brother? Brother Reverend, I don't know what to say. We've got nearly 500 people waiting to hear you, the master team. I want to say before I don't I, I don't need to come on after Lady Adele. She rocked that. Let me tell you something, man. Every single thing she brought was fire and truth. And it's so crazy because she hasn't seen my presentation. My presentation complements exactly what she's done. So it's absolutely insane. That's frequency specificity right there, dude. Seriously. Brothers and sisters, the king, the master teacher is about to present to us now. As I said before, this platform is hidden truth. Understand that. And it's a platform for unity of all schools of thought. But I'm going to say this. <coughs> This brother you're about to listen to is the one of the regular ones that we're tuning into. I choose people, as you know, there's only one or two people that can come to my platform on a regular basis. This is hit. He's one of my master teachers. Reverend, I'm gonna shut up now, brother. And it's it's no brother, I've got to shut up now. The master teachers in the house. Brothers and sisters, 
Get your notebook and pens ready. The master teacher is about to address us. All yours, King. I appreciate it. So I got a PowerPoint presentation I'm going to do it's today. So let me it's share my screen, screen, if I may. And uh, let's see if I can uh, get this PowerPoint shared. And then we can get we can get in it and get at it here. Hold on, let me uh, make it. Uh, yours, King. Take your time. And you uh, should be a blank screen there, but uh, let's see now. Is it uh, opening up? There we go. Clearly, King. There we go. Fantastic. All right. So, uh, you know, I'm so honored to be back with the family uh, uh, over the pond, as they say. Now, Brother Andrew, he keeps using my baby picture on all of the promotionals and everything. This is when I was like, you know, uh, three or four years old. I don't know why he keeps using that photo. <laughs> I love it. But King. that's all right. You know, I was a fine ass baby. That's all I'm saying. That's a good looking child right there. You know, <laughs> now what happened to Rev Shock is racial battle fatigue over the years. <laughs> like, so, so the Rev Shock you see in the day in the photo, you're like, maybe that's my son or somebody. I don't know who that is. But after all the gamma radiation and everything, this is what has happened. So now what we're going to be talking about today <laughs> <laughs> it's what I call in metaphysics chemicalization and preparing for a sudden wealth and identity crisis. So we're going to really go deep into this. And uh, this is, of course, made in part by I have a free special report that is available to all of you. You can go to firstfrequencysuddenwealth.com. And you can download this free special report, or you can make a donation if you'd like to do so, but you don't have to. And it's a, it's a special report on the consciousness and the concept of what sudden wealth means in first frequency. One of the things that we have a problem with that as a result of our trauma, we, when we get uh, extra $100 or extra $100,000 or an extra million dollars, we don't know what to do with that money. And it ends up, we end up sabotaging that wealth and then subsequently, depending upon the size of that wealth, sabotaging ourselves. Uh, and it's because we don't have a genetic memory of wealth. We don't have an understanding of it. And so as a result, we, we, we go into this trauma and we start to act uh, maladaptively on our own behalf. So I did an interview with uh, Nana, Dr. Patricia Newton, and we were getting ready to do a series of workshops together and webinars together, and then she uh, uh, transitioned. And so I dedicate uh, this, this work to her. And also a brother who changed my life, Brother Stanley. Stan Most people know him as MC Hammer. His name is Stanley Burrell. MC Hammer, I got an opportunity to sit across from him in Chicago. One of my um, uh, uh, mentors, uh, uh, Terry Williams, who was his publicist at the time, and, and she's, Terry Williams is, is probably the best uh, uh, publicist of all time. I mean, she was responsible for Eddie Murphy's entire career. Uh, uh, Miles Davis, uh, Janet Jackson, Whitney Houston, Michael Jordan. I mean, she's this, this if, it, if it was anything black and great uh, on television, in movies uh, and in music in the uh, 90s and 2000s, it was probably Terry Williams. And so I got an opportunity to, uh, to meet uh, MC Hammer and sit across from him at the La Meridian Hotel in Chicago. And his story changed my life uh, and took me in a completely different direction. And so I share his sudden wealth story uh, in this free special report. So go there and get that. And as we move forward with the, with the information today, uh, these kinds of things will be begin to be put into uh, perspective. Now, of course, you know, as a minister, I always open up my uh, 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 lectures with our affirmation of power, prosperity, and protection, right? And so what I will do is I will say it once, and then I will allow you to repeat it with me, and that is this. I am one with first frequency. I am one with the first thought idea. I am one with the firstborn people. I am one with the only one, Ashe, and so it is. Now, this is dedicated to uh, three goddesses that uh, shaped my life, my spiritual mothers who shaped my life and, to, and, and still today continue to guide my life. And that is the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman, who's at the bottom of the page. And she always taught us that you are the thinker who thinks the thought that makes the thing. And then on the upper right hand corner is Reverend Dr. Helen Carey. And then of course, Nana, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. 
Ashe. What is first frequency of oneness? We help create a spiritual, psychological, and emotional barrier to the hidden signal of racial battle fatigue and racialized domestic terror. We remove the African and the African American from the effects of their false racial identities, which we call third and fourth frequency. We help the African and African American overcome their trauma bonding, but, capture but, but, bonding, but, but, and but, Stockholm syndrome but, but, to whiteness. Yes, sir, brother. Um, your 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 slides are not moving. Your um, what what are you body. seeing right now? The first, the very first slide of your baby picture. Oh wow, that's crazy. All right, let's see what's going on here. Hold on, I'm going to come out of the slide here, and are you able to see that? We can see now um, a gray slide. What is the frequency of oneness? Okay, okay. So let's go. Uh, so let me thank you for that. So uh, should I? Would it be better if I did it within the PowerPoint presentation, or um, would you want me to do full screen? How do you want me to do it, bro? I, I, li I like it full screen, to be honest. If you you know the full PowerPoint presentation. Okay. I'll I'll try it again, and if it if it freezes on you, just let me know, and I'll just stop it and then move forward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. So let's see if this comes up again. Are you able to see that now? Yeah, but we can see the side. I don't know if you want us to see the side, the side um slide. So normally you can have a whole slide take up the whole screen. Right. I'm in full screen now. Are you able to see the full screen? Not really, brother. It's still on um. Oh, okay. That's weird. All right. Let's see what we're going to do here. Hold on. Let's... Uh... Have you got more than one PowerPoint open? No, only one. Just one. So, yeah. um, so let's try to... Let's see. Hold on. Let me stop sharing here. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Let me figure this out. Because um, that worked well, we perfectly last back. time. So I'm not sure why, but we're going to do it again. I'm going to share my screen uh and ah wait a minute you know what i'm gonna put it on another let me do this i'm gonna put my powerpoint in another window that's right there we go i'm gonna put that in another window now we're gonna hit share screen and we're gonna find that powerpoint and we're going to see if we can open it Be up patient today. brothers and sisters these things sometimes happen now let me ask you this are you able it's good getting ready to come up uh, are you able to see that now in full screen? Not really, sir. No. Really? Not really. Wow, that's crazy. What is going on? Uh, so we Zoom on share. Us, uh, okay, so how's that? Are you able to see that now? Um, no, we, we can see all the different slides at one time. It's like a... Wow, this is crazy. Okay, so this is what we're going to have to do, bro. Uh, hold on. Let me try to come out of here now. Of course, it's stuck. Wait a Take minute. Take a deep breath. One of the one of the sisters. One of the. Questions. This is why. This is when you know you get ready to drop some knowledge. You're like, it's when <laughs> stuff like this starts to happen. That's when you know. It's like, oh, they getting ready to mess with Rev Shock up in here. You know that's it, all man. right. I got you, family. So we're just gonna go through it with uh, in 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 the, within the PowerPoint uh, okay. uh, frame. Oh, good. So so let's just work through that. All right. So. So next slide. So who is Rev Shock Metaphysical Morpheus? We're, we're, we're not, we're not, you're not on share screen yet, bro. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is insane. Now, let me see. How do I want to do that? Okay, we'll do this. Share screen. Now, are you able to see that? Yep. All right. So I'm going to move myself out the way there. I see the uh, videos. Okay. So shall I go back or is it, or, or, or is it good? What does the family need? Uh, I mean, you, you, um, can you play slideshow? I did play slideshow, but it didn't. All right, it, then you got to go, go by one by one, then, bro. It's yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to do, brother, because I don't want to. No I don't want uh, uh, I don't want it to miss. Now, no do you want me to try? You want me to try to play the whole thing again? You know, uh, from from this slide. Yeah. You want me to try it and see? Way. All right, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit play. Uh, play mode. Let's see what happens here, fam. Now, are you able to see the full presentation? Um, not really, but I mean, it's as good as we're going to get, bro. Okay. No, no, it was better before. Okay, what, are, what, do, what do you need me to do? Um, have, as it was before, because we can't see the writing. It's really tiny now. Oh, okay, okay. So let me stop. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get out of here. All right, now uh where are we 
Can you, uh, are we still sharing? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. So now you're able to read this and see this, yes? Yes, just about. Just about. Okay. So let me see if I can move this and make it a little bigger here. Um, so sorry about that. I don't know why it's not playing um, uh, in full screen. That usually is not a problem. Uh, okay. All right. So who am I? Rev, uh, Rev Shock have a master's degree in metaphysical science and philosophy, currently working on my dissertation in the same field uh, for my doctorate. Uh, you can go to metaphysicalmorpheus.com. You can download, there's a fireside chat that I did with brother Billy B. Man Bird, who kind of went through my life history and life story. Uh, I'm the founding minister of First Frequency of Oneness, Science, Manifestation, and Prosperity. Shock, by the way, stands for Seeking Higher Omnipotent Conscious Knowledge. Uh, and I'm the founder of the Shock Metaphysics Virtual Comedic Wisdom School. Uh, I'm also the host of the Philippe Matthews Show. Most of you know me from, uh, from that if you are uh, uh, in, into the uh, global work. I've authored over 19 books uh, and seven best uh, sellers on Amazon. Uh, can using metaphysical med uh, meditation and affirmation daily heal the trauma of generational poverty in African Americans uh, was my thesis that is available on academia. Dot edu, uh, and you can go there and download that uh, for free. When we talk about trauma, I really mapped it out in a big way. Uh, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene calls me the Marcus Garvey of our time, and uh, Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul, calls me the Oprah of Internet. I recently released uh, what I guess what the kids call an EP uh, called Nothing is Wrong with Black People, Something Happened to Black people, and it's available on all streaming platforms. So you can go to Spotify, Apple Music, uh, iTunes, uh, Amazon Music, TikTok, every, everywhere. Uh, just punch in Metaphysical Morpheus or punch in Nothing is Wrong with Black People. Download it, listen to it while you're working out, while you're driving, and get the knowledge and information of that nothing is wrong with us. This is what happened to us. Now, today's class is about chemicalization and the identity crisis uh, for the hidden truth. Now, when we talk about this concept of chemicalization, it's a metaphysical term, and it basically means, it, it, it was so perfect that that Lady Adele, what she brought, uh, was so true and powerful, because this is what happens when, when people receive life-changing information that creates considerable cognitive dissonance old emotional programming and beliefs resist the new information and they began to experience an internal upheaval. And in fact, it doesn't have to necessarily be internal. It could be external as well. Ralph Waldo Emerson says, once the mind has been stretched by a new idea, it never returns to its original dimensions. And so this concept of chemicalization and, 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 and I, it, it throws you into what we call an identity crisis. And that identity crisis is fascinating because how many times have you been uh, uh, given uh, great information, it changed you, but then there's a part of you that might fight uh, to go back to the old ways of, of thinking. Uh, and when that new information comes in, particularly those we've seen in the metaphysical communities or just in, in quote unquote, the woke communities, uh, you, your relationships start to, to, to change. You start struggling, uh, perhaps financially, you start attracting various different problems and challenges. And you don't know why this is happening because you're thinking new, uh, but it's because you have this old neural network of thinking that is based on uh, the, the science that Lady uh, Adele gave us so you're, re you're rebutting, you're rebuking. You're like, no, nah, I'm not gonna fall for the okie doke. And then all of a sudden you start to go through this identity crisis. So let's talk about that. Now in metaphysics, <clears throat> when we talk about this identity crisis, when Africans and African-Americans are presented with a preponderance of overwhelming evidence that decolonizes their mind from second frequency amu or whiteness uh, values, they will experience an identity crisis. Now, some of us have been woke, quote unquote, or conscious for a long time. Some of us are just coming into it. 
most of us are in a layered effect. In other words, uh, there is no uh, uh, sacred like level where you are so woke that you, you know, that you can't go back to sleep again. You know, something you have, there's, there's layers and levels to awareness and to consciousness. But here's the thing, because you are born into a lie, like I said, you're born a god and a goddess. You're taught how to be either a good go-along Negro or a nothing-ass nigger on these streets. Those are the only two choices Black people get, particularly Black men. When you come to the realization that you are not uh, a Negro, you are not a nigga, you are not a false racial construct that a false racial construct presented to you, you go through an identity crisis. There's a problem there where you, you, you know, some people can't handle that level of truth, that they wake up and realize it's like when you find out, uh, some of you who are on this platform uh, are pretty aware, when you find out uh, that, that uh, uh, Christianity is, is, is false, when you find out Jesus never walked the earth, when you find these things out, it's like, you know, it's like Santa Claus is not real anymore. It's like, well, what happened here? You go through this identity crisis, and then you try to go back and try to fix it, but you can't because you can't go back to that way of thinking anymore. Dr. Wade Noble says, we suffer from a shattered consciousness and a fractured identity. And what does that mean? It says, because we suffer from this syndrome, the African and African-American has always suffered from needing a cosign from second frequency Amu and feeling validated. This is what Lady Adele was talking about earlier, where they're trying to make you so codependent <clears throat> on their system that you no longer think for yourself. In fact, you just no longer think. You are a dog. You are a sheep. Uh, you are you're, you're to be herded, if you will. So those who are addicted and trauma bonded to whiteness will need a cosign from a white person or institution. We've all heard this term that um, uh, white ice is colder, right? So we don't work with ourselves and with each other. We will, if it's white, it's supposed to be right. And so we're conditioned that way. And that's called trauma bonding. That's called capture bonding, and that's called Stockholm Syndrome. I have an entire presentation just on the addiction that we have to whiteness. You have to understand when you are uh, born, or at least I'm going to use myself as an example. When I was born, I was immediately uh, 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 introduced, when I went to school, I was immediately introduced to what I call the three white boys. Uh, the white boy on the boat, uh, which was Columbus, the white boy, uh, imaginary white boy on a stick, which was Jesus, and the white boy in the sky, which was God. At that point, I no longer saw myself in humanity. Everything was white to me. And white must be right, so that means I must be what? Wrong. And so once you have that, once, once, you're in, once a child's mind whose brain and nervous system is not fully developed, once they get that, that's called assimilation. That's a war tactic. Right, that's where the fractured consciousness and identity comes from. Because you actually think uh, that, uh, and you probably refer to yourself in, in, at some point in one time as a Negro or a nigger, and that's not the case. That's not who you are. Uh, but because you have been so successfully assimilated, uh, you you are, are going through this identity crisis when you are uh, moving toward what Dr. Obed Ashaka refers to as a pre-disturbance or disturbance that moves you into your African identity. In fact, when I was uh, conditioned to be a Negro Pian, I didn't want anything to do with Africa. I, I, I you know, I looked at all the folks wa wa walking around uh, 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 with, with funny names because <laughs> I thought my name was right and their name was wrong. That's the conditioning and uh, how you become a sheep. And so that intersection between old information, old programming that you were birthed into to this new level of programming that you're receiving creates an identity crisis. This is also due in part to our axiology. Dr. Edwin Nichols was on our show yesterday and he just tore the house down. And the axiology is the study of human values. And so the axiology of the African is person to person, whereas the axiology of the Amu or second frequency European is person to the object. And this is why they objectify everything and everyone and everything is property that they have to have ownership of, they have to have control of. But we're people to people, person to person. And so one of the problems and the mistake is, is that we look at them as we see us. And that's the mistake that we make 
and then our feelings are hurt and we're disappointed and then we're locked into this perpetual level of confusion. So let's continue on. Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene says that it is natural uh, when you are in an unnatural environment to act unnaturally, right? So when we are faced with this, with these three white boys uh, uh, in our, our, our formative years, that's not our natural environment. We're not in our natural environment. Do, uh, uh, Lady Adele just showed you that is not a natural environment, but it's what we live every single day. So it's natural that we would act unnaturally, right? So here's what happens. So I'm gonna go deep into this. When the second frequency Amu began to lose their colonizing power of whiteness and privilege, they too suffer an identity crisis. And what is happening here in America is that white folks are losing their damn minds because they're losing their colonizing power and the government is doing everything it can to try to capture corral and, and control this population. But particularly black folk, we ain't, and we're not even black folks, African Americans and African folk are not having it, right? So when we look at this concept of, our, of an identity crisis, the actual definition is uh, personal psychosocial conflict uh, especially in adolescence that involves confusion about one's social role and often a sense of loss continuity to one's personality. It also says that a state of, of, of confusion is uh, an institution or organization regarding its nature or direction. So when you're born uh, white uh, in this false racial construct called white uh, and you're, you're told, and you don't even have to be told, but you're, if you're told that you are white, white is right, white is on top, you have certain privileges for which other people are denied. When that gets challenged, uh, you go into, the, that child goes into an identity crisis. And so in your adolescence, you'll see that there's a lot of young people, uh, I don't know about the UK, but I know here in the, in, in the States, a lot of white adolescents uh, are killing themselves because they can't handle uh, the level of truth uh, that, and, the, and the reality that they're not in control or that their parents are no longer in control and their parents have lost uh, uh, levels of social status. Now, I wanna play to you, I, I, I created and brought uh, a lot of clips uh, for this particular uh, conversation that I wanna play to you. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here on, on the ground. Can you hear that? Not really, sir. How's that? What are we supposed to do? Okay, the Supreme Court's not helping us. No one's helping us. Only us can help us. Yes, Only we can do it. Now, I just want you to get that part. I'm gonna play the rest of it, but I wanted you to hear what they're saying. We're not in control anymore. What's happening to it? They're going through, this is our, the identity crisis of whiteness. This is what we're seeing for the first time. We've never seen this in America before in this way. This is what's happening. A mass group of Trump supporters stormed the US Capitol on Wednesday to stop the certification of what they believe was a fraudulent election. Unquestionable that our votes were stolen. It's unquestionable. There are so, there's so, much proof. Come on, people, come on. It's not here for nothing. Come on up. Tell me for most of what you say. Look at this. Black people uh, drove white people up the damn wall. This is real facts up here, family. This is insane to me. We want our representatives to do the right thing and be certified like the seven swing states. Also, look at the age of the ones that are doing the most talking. Those are the ones that are becoming extinct. We're going to go into that in a moment. They're losing their power. Allies as they continue to lie that the election was stolen. Let's have trial by combat. He just said trial by combat. I'm ready. I'm ready. People marched down two avenues to the Capitol, and once they got there, some broke through barricades. Once a few rioters broke into the building, the mob followed. Kill him. Kill him. 
I was actually here while this guy started breaking in with a, with a cane. Obviously, there's a power struggle. There's peaceful guys that were like, no, no, we don't want to do that. Then there was that guy. You know, he just said, well, oh, well, I'm breaking it in. So let's talk about this understanding. This is what I want you to see, because I don't know if they're playing these, these same clips uh, are in your neck of the woods, as they say. But I want you to be able to understand and decode this as to why they're acting the way they're acting. Now, I'm going to introduce you to when I was speaking in Africa uh, with Dr. Susan Tata on her platform, I introduced this concept called the third mutation, the autogenocide of whiteness, uh, the psychopathy and, and sociopathy, because it's not natural to be white. And so I want you to really get this, that it's never been natural to be white, but there are three mutations that the AMU has gone through. Now, let's first define autogenocide. Autogenocide is the arbitrary or ideologically inspired mass murder of a country's citizens by its own ethnic uh, group against its own, uh, against its own ethnic group. So before a species experiences the extinction protocol of autogenocidal genetic annihilation, they first become irrelevant and suffer a loss of value and a diminished sense of significance. This is what whiteness uh, is, is seeing and feeling for the very first time. And they don't know what to do and how to handle this. So now, the first mutation, uh, if, you're, if you've been in the conscious community, you know about the Ice Age theory, Dr. Sheikh onto Job, civilization and barbarism, uh, that these people, uh, these Africans were trapped uh, in the Caucasus uh, uh, region for over 100,000, 300, uh, 100, 300 years, where they were trapped in the worm glaciation, which was the last uh, ice age. And as a result, uh, over time, I had a conversation with Dr. Uh, David Imhotep, uh, who wrote the, uh, uh, who did the research, uh, took over Dr. Uh, Van Sertema's work. Uh, his book is um, the first uh, Americans were Africans. And he goes into this amazing uh, deep dive as I had this conversation with him about, it was the last 5,000 years <clears throat> of generations. And by the way, if you put, I think 100,300 years into 25 years, uh, generationally, we're talking about 44, a little over 44,000 generations to um, uh, for, for the African to depigment themselves to devolve what happened in the ice, <clears throat> particularly in the last 5,000 5, of those years, based on the research from uh, our scholars, is that they devolved. In other words, you know, we are, we, while, while Africa, the world is evolving, the, the moment the ice came up from the ground, it didn't come from uh, top down, it came from the bottom up. And it happened so gradually over time, there's a concept about uh, the, the, how do you cook a frog? You put the a frog in cold water and then you turn on the heat and as it gradually begins to boil because it's a, a, slow, bur a slow boil, the frog doesn't know. And so it ends up dying and, and, and being boiled to death. Well, the ice did the opposite for us. It devolved the African and became and created a recessively genetic species. So that's the first mutation. And uh, hopefully if this is making sense, put some ones uh, in the chat. And Andrew, if you wanted to come out and have uh, a, a comment or a question, you may do so, because I really want the family to understand those last 5,000 years, we're looking at temperatures between 200 to 400 below zero that will create a psychopathic uh, process in the brain. This is where the, pine, the concept of the frozen pineal gland comes from. Dr. Edwin Nichols in his work in axiology talks about how the person to the object is created and was created in this first mutation in the ice. They, uh, as a result, <clears throat> had only three months sometimes to develop a crop and to nurture the crop. Otherwise, everybody died, right? And this happened again and again and again. And as a result, it causes you to want to survive over everything. So resources, owning property, uh, not, not caring about and not having feelings or emotions, 
also because you're devolving, because the environment is recessively uh, causing your genetics to become weak and brittle and fragile, hence the term white fragility. As a result uh, of your recessive genetics and the result of a frozen pineal gland, meaning that when you devolve from the ice, you're not able to spiritually connect to first frequency. Your first frequency is the creator. That the creator said, I love uh, uh, myself and my people so much that when I replicate and duplicate, I'm going to create the African, which was the first frequency, the first concept, the first idea. When we went into the ice and became depigmented and began to devolve and became recessively genetic, a, a new species was created. So uh, God doesn't make mistakes, but nature makes corrections. So in this ice, this is what has happened. So I just kind of wanted to give you an understanding of that level of mutation. It happened over so many generations that it looked like it was normal. It looked like it was natural, but it was nothing natural uh, about them. So then here, and, and by the way, the concept of a mutation of a mutation comes from first Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, who teaches us that the first mutation was the ice. And then he taught us the second mutation. The second mutation is when the ice melted and they became uh, aware that there's an entire population of beautiful melanated uh, African people, they had a choice to make. Usually what happens is in, na in nature, uh, if there's an albino uh, plant, animal, insect, what ha whatever happens, the goal is for it to go back and mate to the with the original archetype so it won't end up uh, walking itself off, off the uh, 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 timeline of, of, uh, of, of creation. In other words, the moment that they inbred, they started to move themselves into extinction. And that's the, that's the autogenocidal uh, process that we're gonna be talking about that when you don't go back into the archetype and you inbreed, and we understand what inbreeding is the production of offspring from the mating uh, or breeding of individuals or organisms that are closely related genetically. So they, be, so they developed what we call a xenophobia, the fear of the foreign. They decided to uh, go into what uh, Dr. Francis Crest Welsing refers to as reaction formation where they looked at all of these beautiful uh, uh, melanated bodies, realized that they were recessively genetic. They didn't have the terminology of that at the time, but they felt obviously some kind of way. They had no spiritual system. They were barbaric. Uh, they, they, they slept with their animals. Uh, they had relationships with, relations with their animals. These were beastly people. And there's a lot of data that comes out of the concept of the caveman and the Neanderthal as a result of who these people were. And so they began to inbreed, which created another layer and level of psychopathic and sociopathic behavior. Now, fast forward to what I refer to now as the third mutation. And that is in America, the invention of white people. It is not natural family to be white. Anyone that refers to themselves as a white person is referring themselves of something that is not natural. It's a different species. It's a mutation of a mutation of a mutation. And as a result, when you are looking into those brown eyes, I mean, those blue eyes or those green eyes or whatever color those eyes are, when you're looking at a white person or you're, you're not looking at that, they're not white, they're European, but they have two generations of mutations. And so this is the problem that we're having because as the axiology says, we're person to person, people to people. We want uh, uh, them to treat us as we treat each other. That's not going to happen because that is not the nature of the species. So let's go in a little deeper here when we talk about it's not natural to be white. So since it's not a natural occurrence in nature, white people, whiteness is a psychopathic, sociopathic idea. It's an idea invented by a group of desperate, fragile British European men. Yeah, I'm blaming y'all, I'm blaming y'all. Uh, British men between 1664 and 1681 which were called the anti-miscegenation laws or anti-miscegenation laws. 
who thought it was a good idea to invent a divide and conquer strategy, a false racial constru uh, construct of people who believe they must have special privilege over the dominant global population of African people in order to exist and survive. And again, this complements Lady Adele's uh, 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 research and her, her scholarship. When we understand that in response to Bacon's rebellion, which was a, a, a fight that uh, occurred uh, that was similar to what you saw in the insurrection of what Donald Trump was trying to, to do, where that was very successful that, that they went after, the poor people went after the elite. And so uh, as a result, they decided to create a divide and conquer strategy and they invented this new uh, level of humanity called white people. Completely false, but made up, but by matter of law, this is what they did. There's no biological evidence of making up a label and a false racial construct called white people. This white uh, mimetic ideology became a thought virus that jumped from person to person, became airborne or conscious and infected billions of Africans worldwide. So let's get into the understanding that in these anti-miscegenation uh, 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 laws, three of them, there was a cluster of them. And most people, when they think of anti-miscegenation law is that, that it's to stop the mixing of the races, which is part of it. But there are three things that happen. I talked about this, I think the last time that I was here, but it needs to be repeated. Uh, and we need to uh, condition ourselves to memory for it. The first one was that a person of African descent could not run for office or vote. The second in the anti-messagination law was a person of African descent could not uh, own a gun or gunpowder, guns or gunpowder. So they could not eat, they couldn't defend themselves. They were completely made helpless. And this was really an assault to the black, the African man. This is when uh, African men became boys. The third uh, law was that a person of African descent could not uh, sue or take any type of legal action against this new designation of false humanity called white. So that is when, that's what brought us to this conversation today and the situation that we're in. This false racial construct of white is what we're looking at. Now, Dr. Jacqueline Battalora, uh, I did an interview with her. This is what she says. There are only two reasons, two reasons, and she's a, a, a great historian, her book is birth of a white nation. There's only two reasons that white people were invented. Let me just sum up what, what, what the store, this historical um, information reveals to us about white, about whiteness, white people as they were invented, we were invented. So we know that white people um, were, were built upon the idea that the British elite had of themselves as white, as Christian, as freeborn and as deserving of rights and privileges from which others can be denied. Um, so that you learn um, through an analysis of the laws through which they created and asserted this entirely new group of humanity called white people. And then the historical context reveals to us that white people were invented to divide. We have served that purpose ever since. Wow, that's we, a very powerful. The, to divide humanity and the flip side of that um, is to protect and ensure the interests of the one percent mm -hmm. that's the only reason white people exist so there you have it i'm sure you've never heard it from an amu before but many of the amu historians this is what we know they were invented whiteness was invented to divide and conquer humanity and to protect the 1%. And when that is challenged, this is what happens. Now I came up with an equation family that you can write down. And so chemicalization and the identity crisis uh, that whiteness, white people are, uh, are, are dealing with is what I call WP plus WF equals WR. White, when white uh, people were invented, it created instantly white privilege or power for those people. That's Dr. Peggy McIntosh's work. When white people, when white privilege is challenged, it creates white fragility, Dr. Robin D'Angelo. 
But when white fragility is challenged, it creates white rage. If this makes sense, give me some ones and so, something. Show me a little something, something in the chat. If this makes sense. Easy, Rasta. Rasta, <laughs> easy. <laughs> I just love you, Andrew. I need you like on my dresser every morning as like cheering me on. You know, this is this is great. Andrew makes me feel like a great guy. Okay, so now here's the thing. So when we're dealing with whiteness, we're dealing with autogenocide because they can't handle the truth. They can't handle the fact they don't know they're not, they're not white. They don't know that they're a mutation of a mutation of a mutation. And so they end up choosing only three sides. Genocide, kill the other. Homicide, kill each other. Suicide, kill ourselves. So now I'm giving this framework to you so you can look at the behavior of particularly what's happening on this continent. I think in your neck of the woods, I think it's called Brexit. I think there's some similarities there. I'm not sure about all of that level of history, but there are some issues that are coming up globally because their numbers are diminishing so greatly and so rapidly as a result white people are losing their damn minds. And so this is known as birth dearth. Birth dearth is uh, what happens when a population does not have enough children to repopulate the, the, the species or that particular group and they end up becoming extinct. So there's a lot of, 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 of autogenocidal uh, behaviors, processes that are in place that are causing this to happen. So let's watch it this. An alarming story about rising death rates among white adults in America. WSJ's special writer, Betsy McKay, joins us now to discuss. Thanks for being here, Betsy. Thanks for having me. As you point out in your piece, this trend is shocking for an economically advanced country like the United States. What is driving the uptick in deaths? Well, this is a really interesting study and it follows on some work done uh, about a year and a half ago by the same two um, economists at Princeton, which found that mortality was rising among middle-aged Americans. So then they set out to figure out a couple of things. One, how widespread was that problem? And secondly, you know, what might be driving it? So what they found in their new paper is that um, mortality is rising, not just for middle-aged Americans, but for, for Americans between 25 and 64. Um, years of age. And what's driving that really is our rises in mortality in um, people who have a high school education or less. So working class Americans. For people with a college degree, um, mortality is still declining. So to have, you know, mortality um, rise in a, in a developed nation is very, very unusual. And, you know, our, our mortality rates have been declining for decades. Right. Um, they, um, they posit a hypothesis, which is really interesting. They, they examined a ton of data, economic data, health data um, from you know, national sources. And what they believe is going on is that um, the types of jobs available to um, working class Americans have changed since the 70s. They're less stable, more minimum wage jobs, um, less opportunity for advancement. And at the same time, there are a lot of social trends, decline in marriage, um, more cohabitation, more, um, you know, children born way out of wedlock, um, more social isolation, families aren't stable. Right. And so you talked, you touched on education and also the workforce, these deaths of despair, especially with the opioid, opioid crisis we've seen in America, uh, they believe are leading more white adults to die younger. Is that correct? That's correct. And they do point out that these trends were, um, you know, underway before the opioid epidemic took off. I mean, opioids were really introduced in the 90s and the epidemic has kind of taken off in the 2000s, whereas changes were starting to occur, you know, before uh, before the mid 90s. But, but the o opioid epidemic has definitely accelerated it. And then on top of that, you know, you have alcohol related liver diseases and you have suicide. Suicide and opioids are are often tied, you know, it's hard to tell sometimes whether a drug overdose was intentional or accidental. Right. Well, it's also interesting because these studies always look at race. And here the researchers found that blacks and Hispanics face many of the same income struggles as white work the white working class, yet they've experienced a decline in mortality rates. So how do you make sense of that? Yeah, well, so that's the, that's the puzzle for everyone. Um, you <laughs> know, what is. they say is that for whites, for working class whites, times were better 
earlier. So in other words, there was an expectation, um, more of an expectation of life improving. Whereas for Blacks and Hispanics, you know, they, they've been moving up, um, certainly, you know, some some parts of those populations. And there wasn't the, you know, they believe there just wasn't the expectation that with every generation, you're going to live better um, than your parents. They also Let me just pause that for a moment so that we can, I just want to uh, uh, isolate that, that section for a moment, if I may. Um, this is where the concept make America great comes in again, right? It's never been great for Africans and African Americans. But there was a point and a time when they were prosperous. I mean, think about it, free labor for uh, uh, almost 300 years. Yeah, that was, that was when America was great for white people and their mortality rate uh, increased. They lived longer, they were healthier. But guess what? Now, as a result of what has happened with the truth, because truth can't, you know, nature cannot die. Nature cannot die. Truth cannot die. And guess what Africans and African-Americans are? We're the truth. We are the first nature. We are, we are the creator's first nature. And so that's why we survive. Now we are wounded and we're scarred and we have some, you know, some, we have our own mental issues, but this is a fight uh, uh, that is a fight of genetic proportion. This is a fight of consciousness. This is a fight that they are becoming extinct. They don't know, or they haven't put together the, 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 the differences in their mutations. So they're just looking at this from an economic standpoint. Also, um, you know, think what needs to be explored is they or they posit the idea that um, anti-poverty programs have been of more benefit to blacks, whereas whites might not have been able to benefit from them. Their you know salaries might have been high enough um, so that they don't qualify. Last but not least, one of the biggest stories today is the health care vote. We could be seeing some. All right, so I'm going to let that I'm going to let that fly. So that I just wanted you to understand that. They are. They know they are suffering from a birth dearth. They know they are dying off as a population, but they don't know what to be able, what to do about it. And there's so many factors that are happening as a result. So, when we look at auto genocide, 50 plus year old white men and women storming the Capitol building, climbing the walls, stealing podiums, breaking and entering, wearing Viking attire and T-shirts in the dead of winter, mind you, in the dead of winter, and a raging pandemic is auto genocidal behavior. So that's due to the chemicalization of their identity crisis because they feel that uh, that to be see one of the problems that I have uh, when we talk about this this concept of the Negro or the Negro Pian uh, or the Coon or the third frequency when people say I am not African I'm American what you're saying is is that you're white because America was white before the con it was a hundred years family before the constitution was written, these anti-messagination laws were put in place. Whiteness had been invented. A hundred years before the constitution, constitution, a hundred years before that, before Jefferson and all of the presidents were born, before race was a concept, they had to, it took another hundred years to create the concept, the false concept of race doesn't exist. Before the first meeting of Congress, white, was established. When you when you live and create a lie, eventually you're going to run out of time. You're going to run into the truth. And this is what's happening. When you see America or the situation I think with you in, in, the, in the UK with Brexit, when you see these middle-aged white people losing their damn minds, is because your, our job is just to get the hell out of the way. You can't help them, you can't save them, nor should you. This is a, uh, a, a genetic response. This is, a, this is not a natural species that has taken over this planet. And so they're doing everything they can to matter, uh, which is why when they say, when you say black lives matter, they have to say all lives matter because they feel they don't matter. Nature did this to them, not African people. So white people or whiteness is not a natural, normal, or reflect, uh, 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 reflect, in, or reflect any semblance of mental health. Mentally healthy people don't do this. People genetically recessive that sense their extinction and their autogenocide and irrelevance, yeah, they do that, right? But the African, we don't fear, uh, uh, we don't fear extinction. We fear death, but we don't fear extinction.
and autogenocidal extinction. And that's the difference of what we're fighting. So uh, to be a little funny, uh, when we look at the, what happened in the, cap in the Capitol and everything, let's look at Kaepernick. So he's disrespecting the flag. Look at what just happened. But this brother can't get a job in doing what he does because he's disres uh, disrespecting the flag. All right, let's look at a little bit more footage here. And I just want you to look at these pictures. Two men, two different flags. Two men who showed up in the service of this president's lies. One desecrating the nation's capital, carrying a Confederate battle flag. One desecrating the American flag itself, using it to beat a police officer. Wouldn't you rather someone kneel? <laughs> Seems more respectful to me. So this is uh, where it comes, you know, this is where, as, as Malcolm says, chickens have come home uh, to roost. Now, what happens when we are dealing with chemicalization and the identity crisis. There is a cognitive bias known as the backfire effect. Now the backfire effect is a psychological phenomenon where people not simply reject facts that contradict their established beliefs, but also hold uh, a stronger reassuring lies. Uh, the election was stolen. I know it was stolen. There's no way that, 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 that Biden could have won. Why? Because black people voted this guy in. This was an African movement in America. And so they don't wanna talk about that. So they're in denial of that. We're supposed to be less than human, it don't matter anyway. So of course the votes don't count, right? That's the backfire effect bias that is happening. They can't handle the truth. They can't see the truth. This is actually biological in its nature. So uh, Dr. Uh, Gleb Sapersky says sticking to pre-existing beliefs that do not align with reality causes us to develop unrealistic expectations. And we inevitably grow stressed, anxious, and depressed when our bubble is popped by the sharp needle of reality. Hopefully this is making sense to you family and this is beginning to paint an understanding and a picture and a framework that you'll be able to move forward and be able to see that in how the Amu uh, acts and responds no matter what continent it is, whether that's in Africa, whether that's uh, uh, in, in the UK, whether that's here in America or any part of the world, when we look at governments and power and situation, this is what they're doing. They're trying to maintain their relevancy. They don't know that they're gonna be auto, uh, auto uh, they're, they're engaged in auto extinction. They recognize the birth dearth, but they think that they can cheat nature as they always have. They think they can, they're bigger and better than nature. They're the opposite or antithesis of nature. We are one with nature. So we're gonna be okay. Remember when I, when I was here last time and I did the joke about the, the, the Joey riding his bike off the cliff and you know, your mom used to say, hey, you know, if Joey rides his bike off the cliff, are you gonna do it uh, too? Well, many of us are, we don't have a bike. We're on Joey's handlebars. So if we're on Joey's handlebars and Joey is going off the cliff, uh, we, 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 we're in a bad way, right? So what we have to do is we got to get ourselves the hell out of the way and let nature do its job. Now, nature is, a, the, the arc is, uh, evolution is slow. Uh, it, some things are going to happen in our time. A lot of things are not going to happen in our time, but you can definitely rest assured that it will always be on time. So as a result, what you are seeing is, uh, the beginning of this extinction, this genetic response to their extinction. So the backfire effect as it relates to whiteness attitudes goes beyond just being stubborn. The recessive, recessive gene literally cannot see the truth or accept it. Therefore, they develop a stronger attachment to their incorrect beliefs. Dude is sitting, I mean, dude really thinks he won the election. I'm not bullshitting. He thinks he won the election. We got Maury Povich up here saying, dude, you are not the president of the United States, dude. It's just not happening. But this is, this is what happens when you are psychopathic and sociopathic. This is why you have to have your right state of mind and understand what there is nothing wrong with black people. Something happened to black people and it was them. So understand 
This is what uh, uh, D.L. Hughley had to say. Michael Jackson, PYT, uh, the news, uh, breaking news, there are men and women protesters storming the Capitol. These are not protesters. These are rebels. These are people trying to thwart and attempt to throw over the government. They are trying to thwart the will of the American people. They have lost, and now they are, they are taking their anger out on the people that they feel they can intimidate. You lost. Move on. And this is all uh, at, at the behest of the president of the United States of America, aided by almost 200 senators, some in the Congress and some in the Senate, who are now giving air and grievance to an to a unnecessary thing. You lost. But white men know that when they lose, they get something general. If you run a team into the ground, you get to be an assistant on another team. You get a severance package. If you are a corporation and you run a corporation to the ground, you get a, you get a golden parachute because you always land on your feet. If you start a war with the country, the United States of America, you get the electoral college, which gives you false power that you have not earned or do not deserve. Because the Constellation Prize is something. You storm, you pout, you threaten death, and you, and you get something for it. You lost. Your way lost. Yeah, and, and I get this decided impression that it would be going a lot differently if instead of proud boys, the police would be showing as much restraint. If instead of proud boys, it were black boys storming the Capitol. You lost. Your way lost. It lost in Georgia. This is the first time Warnock won in that, went in that Senate seat is the very first time in Georgia history where a black man beat a, beat a white woman and didn't get lynched. <laughs> Purdue now, instead of eating chicken, is eating crow. This is what happens. It had, you lost your way lost. You cannot intimidate or murder your way into power anymore. It is over for your way of life. And this is what happens when things crumble. That were so there it is. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's being said. It's, it, we see it. We understand it. We get it. But so do they at that level. And they can't handle it. And that is what creates what we call cortical shutdown. So when the prefrontal cortex, when cortical shutdown occurs due to the backfire effect, it affects a part of the brain known as the VMPFC or ventral medial prefrontal cortex. That's the section right here that's purple. This part of the brain regulates our level of stress or the ability to handle stress. When that part of the brain cannot function, we start to act maladaptively as in case we start climbing Capitol walls. We start uh, protesting and, and, and saying that the election was stolen. When the VMPFC of whites begin to break down and they go through cortical shutdown due to the backfire effect, this is what happens, this is what occurs. It affects us as well, but I just wanted to give you an understanding of what, what it looks like on their side, on their end. So uh, as we begin to wind down here, I want you to understand that you're going to go through several different stages of chemicalization. But what's happening is, is that you are awakening. What Brother Andrew uh, has done uh, for my research on this brother as a result of, I think this is my third time with the, with the, with the UK family. What Brother Andrew has done, uh, he has put together a process of awakening uh, Africans that uh, is literally shocking. I mean, the, the, the information that the brother uh, brings and the people that he brings and, and, and when he does these, these, you know, the, like what he's doing with Blade and, and Dr. Strange, and th that stuff, man, will mess your mind up if you are trying to hold on to old ways of thinking. And so this is a shock to the system and so I like the analogy of what happens when we go through chemicalization and we begin to wake up. One of my favorite scenes is the scene in the matrix that uh, I'm gonna play for you now. This is why they call me the metaphysical Morpheus. And this is the truth of what has happened to us. You have never used your eyes before. That is what hit in truth. That is what Brother Andrew Muhammad is bringing to you. And, and that's can, why your can, eyes can, hurt. Can Go I, ahead, can, Brother Andrew. I'll just add, Brother, because 
I, I, I want to just say very quickly, because I don't want to stop the brother. He's on a roll right now. But brothers and sisters, I'm hoping, please, because sometimes I think, are we ready for this message? Because mm. as the brother's dropping science and facts down, notice the brother is not hyperventilating, he's not frothing at the mouth, he's not shouting in hysteria. This is truth multiplied by truth. And once you understand that, brothers and sisters, you don't have to react on an emotional tip. You understand it's a masterclass. And in truth, even if because I know there are white people listening to this, European people, British people listen to this. Yeah, it's not about, it's, you know, and, we're not and, trying to down anybody. Nobody's exactly. better or worse. This and if is you, science. And, come on, brother. And if you understand this, it's a message of healing for both people. Yeah, because you've got understanding and appreciate. This is a, such a brilliant session. And, I, and, and just to say this to you, brother and sisters, I don't want to stop the brother, and I really apologize. I was trying to talk, but brother and sisters, in the near future, uh, myself and um, Reverend Shock, which we call him the Metaphysical Morpheus, the first frequency. We are going to do a joint session. Yes. Breaking down the matrix. And I'm yes. telling you, brothers and sisters, yes. you ain't seen anything yet until you see the transatlantic combination of myself and Reverend Shock going yes. into the, the matrix for today. I'm going to teach you how to collapse time. Sorry, Reverend. Carry on, King. No, no problem, my brother. I'm, I'm excited as heck about that. That's going to be, that's going to be just complete what they say, epic. But you bring up a great point, brother Andrew, and that is, uh, my ministry, my movement, my, my scholarship is not based on self-esteem. It's based on science. I don't care how you feel. I just care that you feel something. I, I don't care what you think, as Dr. John Henry Clark would say. I care that you think. So it's not a lot of, it's not, it's no hyperbole. I don't have to hype this up. Uh, you just have to do the primary research. In Africa, this known as Tep Haseb, T-E-P-H-E-S-E-B, -E Tep Haseb. Tep Haseb uh, uh, is, is the, the, the term means accurately knowing by using the correct method. Today, we would call that the scientific method. But this is what this is based on. So my ministry is not based on shouting and jumping up and down and, and giving false relief and false uh, pretense and false white boys and people on sticks. And, and all. we don't do any of that. It's based on science. And I'm bringing it to you so you can understand why nothing is wrong with you. Nothing, nothing is wrong with black people. Not a damn thing. We are perfect, whole and complete. That's how we were born. That's how we were meant to be. Do you think that when the creator decided to create the first uh, frequency uh, human, first frequency African. Do you think that that the creator would create something fragile? No, we are a fact of nature. What happened to the Africans that went into the ice became the freaks of nature. And I'm sorry, I can't change that. That was nature. Black people didn't have anything to do with it, uh, white people. You are who you are by what you are, but you are genetically recessive. I, May Jameson went up into the uh, uh, first uh, 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 African uh, astronaut, went up uh, to do a study on bone density to find out who had the strongest bones to be able to live in space. Because of course, uh, uh, the Amu, second frequency white, wants to get off of this planet and they wanna know, can they survive? No, what, did, what do you think May Jameson discovered when she went up there and studied bone density in space, who was the who had the strongest bones? Ah, go ahead, I'll wait. Yep, it was the African female. Teach the African female is the strongest species because Lucy was first. Do you think? Come on, let's use our common sense. Come Do you on, think now. the creator would create something that could not survive? its own making. We, why do you think we're so resilient? Why do you think we're still here? Why do you think that no matter what they have done to us, we still rise? Why do you think that? We're first frequency. We don't die, we multiply. We are the best of the best, but we have been taught a lie. We've been birthed into it intergenerationally, epigenetically, and we think something's wrong with us. Not a damn thing is wrong with us. We are the best of the best. You have to go through an identity crisis and a chemicalization because 
you don't know how to walk the earth as a god or a goddess yet. You don't know how to act because you're in an unnatural environment. So that's why you're acting unnaturally. All right, so let's go into this as we wrap it up. So I made a list of things that we need to do. Number one, we need to engage in what's called a whiteout. I got this concept from Dr. Joy DeGruy, who uh, wrote the book and did the research called Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome, PTSS. Reduce your proximity to whiteness. So whatever that looks like. For me, uh, because I have been able to master the internet and master time and be able to collapse time, I don't have to go to uh, a white institution to earn money. I don't have to go to a white person to earn money. I am completely self-sufficient and I, I work with the community and I work with black people for black people only exclusively end of story. So that reduces my proximity to whiteness. I don't allow whiteness to enter into my home. I don't engage in uh, uh, conversations, dinner and socializations with them. Uh, this is a, uh, when we talk about whiteout, we have to understand that we have to uh, create a new level of segregation that works for us, not against us because there was a study done by Dr. William A. Smith. Uh, I, think I, I think I put that up on the screen last time I was here. I'm not sure. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up uh, back. Uh, right, he, he did the research called racial, that, that termed the phrase racial battle fatigue. He found that there were literally psychological and physiological problems that, that come from being in white spaces continuously. White people literally make us sick. That's why I say we ain't sick. We're sick from being around sick people. So the understanding of this, that, that when you start to reduce your proximity, you begin to heal. But here's the thing. If you are addicted, trauma bonded, and capture bonded to whiteness, when you start to remove yourself from them, you start yearning for them. It's like a drug. It's like a heroin. I got to gotta, I gotta get that snowflake. I got to be around the snow. I got I to gotta have it. You have to understand that is part of the virus. Their virus, they actually omit. Uh, Otiena Warario from the continent gave us the uh, history and the science. I wrote about it in my book called Hidden Signal, uh, where they literally omit an actual frequency and virus of submission and oppression. So this is science, not self-esteem. So as a result, that's why you feel some kind of way. And so it hijacks uh, and uses our natural axiology against us of being people to people, person to person, because we want to treat them like we treat everyone. We want to treat everyone like my aunt. You can't. So you have to do what I'm, what I'm considering to introduce to the community as suspended axiology, where you suspend your natural axiology, and when you are around them, you act according to how they act. Dr. Edwin Nichols, who was on the show yesterday, confirmed my, uh, my uh, new ideology, if you will, a concept. And that is you go to work white and you come home black. In other words, when you are around them, you treat them person to the object. When you're with your people, you treat them with the, your natural axiology, which is person to person or people to people. Cleanse your trauma bond, your capture bonding and Stockholm syndrome, change your language. Recognize nothing is supreme about white. We, uh, if you notice, I don't use, I'm, 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 I'm exercising, excavating this terminology out of my system, out of my DNA. Every time you speak the word, uh, the, the words white supremacy, you're automatically putting yourself below. Stop it. There's nothing supreme about them. They're the most fragile, recessive people. So what I do is I say, rather than uh, supreme, I say white, uh, a, a white fragilite, uh, a white recessive, uh, a, a genetic recessive. Speak, to, speak the actual science. Use the language of science. It is not about race because race is a false construct. Just speak the language of science and nothing white is a lie, supreme, in association to white is a lie. So that is not the truth. There's no science to, to support that white is supreme. Check your secondary and tertiary gain, your addiction to trauma, to the, your addiction to whiteness, as I talked about earlier, we are addicted to it. So when we, uh, you know, I always joke about 
you know, if we ever had to do a, 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 a this versus them situation where we had to negotiate to get our own sovereignty, I would have to say, all right, I need to talk to uh, uh, Costco, the people who own Costco, Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon, because I love those. I love those white people. I love those white that white organization, right? But but I don't deal with them on a one to one basis. But but Amazon is, is particularly in the pandemic, and Costco and everything that delivers is absolutely fantastic. So take the scholarship, and this is very true. And I had this conversation with Professor Cabo. The scholarship, take what you need. It's like uh, taking your 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 uh, uh, money back, taking the, the things that were stolen from you back. Uh, take the best and leave the rest. Dr. John Henry Clark taught us that. So, as a result, it's okay to pull information from them, look at their scholarship. Some of their scholarship is fantastic, but just don't hang out with the scholar. That's all I'm saying. When you are, uh, when when your true African identity is restored, which is what Dr. Obadishaka refers to as sixfold stages to mental freedom, you will realize that you have not and have never been sick or mentally ill. You have been sick and mentally ill from being captured, corralled, and controlled by sick, mentally ill people. Treat all species with dignity and ma'at. That is just our basic nature. But realize that you are dealing with a species that suffers from a psychological and biological virus due to three mutations that they're completely unaware of. They're completely unaware of. Think about people you've known that are, were sick. And this is unfortunate. Some of us it could be family members. You had a cancer. Didn't know you had a cancer. Wasn't it was misdiagnosed, undiagnosed, or wasn't seen? You've been sick all this time and didn't know it. This is what we're dealing with with this species with these three uh, mutations. Insulate, inoculate, and protect yourself from second frequency viruses, as you would treat any other virus protocol. So they tell you in COVID, you know, when you come in, you wear a mask, right? You distance yourself socially. You come in and you wash your hands. Now I say you wash your hands spiritually. You spiritually wash your hands from being around the Amu. And I'm gonna give you a concept that we, uh, that brother Billy Bird uh, uh, has produced uh, for the family uh, that gives you the process to be able to uh, restore your first frequency signal, to reconnect and strengthen your first frequency signal. Because whiteness is a lie and a false racial construct, First frequency can never, can never, and should never be honest with uh, inherently unconscious, dishonest people. You must learn to lie, deflect, redirect any and all questions that they uh, uh, that that you are asked by whiteness that they want to know to interrogate you, so that they can defeat you. See, there are white people right now that might be listening that say, I don't want, I, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I didn't want to hurt anybody. How can I buy, how can I be less white? How can you help? See, they're going to co-opt you and say, how can you help me be less uh, violent towards you, which is absolutely insanity. But that's a tactic and a technique of fragility. As a result, you never tell them the truth. You never talk to them and tell them about what you are, who you are, why you are the way that you are. That is something that they're trying to use to figure out how they're going to survive. This is a fight of nature. This is not a, this is not a terrestrial fight. This is a celestial fight. This is now in consciousness, family. Nature is taking care of this. You've got to get out of the way. And you've got to know how to maneuver when you are in war and at war and know that you are always in war and at war and have been before you were born. All right, let's move on as we wind down. When in proximity to second frequency, be mindful and aware of what's known as secondary syndrome, whereby you may unconsciously become contaminated by the virus and begin taking on the symptoms of second frequency, no differently than medical students who show signs and symptoms of the diseases they are in constant study of during their medical career. My queen is a nurse uh, of 45 years. She hit me to the science called secondary syndrome, where students, uh, because they're studying and being in proximity for so long to studying these diseases, they come down with the symptoms. Now, our, when I say we're not sick, we're sick from being around what? White people? That's what I'm talking about. 
So the more you're around them, the sicker you become, and then you start acting like them. Then you start harming your own people. You become the Beckys and the Karens, uh, the Black Beckys and Karens to your own people. This is how the Negro Pian is, is created. This is how third frequency is created because you're in a second, you're suffering from secondary syndrome. You're around something sick. And so as a result, you start taking on the symptoms of that which you are around and that which is sick. Is this making sense? If so, please put a one in the chat. If you want to give me a holla out, Andrew, make me feel good about myself. I appreciate it. <laughs> we got it, bro. We've got it. We've got it. <laughs> Number 11. It is best. <laughs> it is best. Thank you, brother. It's best to engage, not to engage in a cold turkey uh, disconnection. Now, what I did is I went cold turkey and, and I went into a whiteout. I just stopped because I was able to do so. I just stopped and said, okay. What happens if I just stop listening to white music, if I stop watching white uh, shows, commercials, TV, television, news, if I take out all of these, all of, the, all of the frequencies of the Amu in my space, what will happen? And it was the craziest damn thing. And that was, I began to feel better. I began to heal. I had better sleep. Uh, I did have a little uh, uh, anxiety where I was, I, 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 I saw my own trauma bonding uh, uh, to whiteness. Uh, and that was my, ad <laughs> my addiction to Amazon uh, and Costco. When I go shopping, I go, sh I go all in, I go all out fam. I'm done. You know, I got, I got, Rev Shop got issues. Okay. And so I have, I'm still working on my, on my, on my issues. But I don't want nothing to happen to Jeff Bezos because I just love that that Amazon is just amazing in terms of that. But I began to literally psychologically and physiologically heal as a result of removing myself uh, from the proximity of them. Now, Africa number 12, Africanize your thinking and learning. I cannot stress this enough. Now, Brother Andrew, uh, by default, if you just sat up uh, literally and absorbed every show, every process, every guest that Brother Andrew has on his platform, you will automatically begin to synthesize and Africanize your thinking. You will begin to cleanse yourself uh, of that, of that uh, uh, signal of the Amu. And so this is a daily cognitive task because our unconscious Stockholm syndrome, our bonding to our capture uh, and addiction to whiteness, uh, white values subconsciously creates a genetic memory that uh, believe that success at any level is acting or being white. That is the dumbest ish I've ever heard. But this is what we suffer from. Some of us think that we're trying to be white. The fact that we even speak English or, or as you would say, proper English, I say, oh boy, that you're trying to be white. No, you're not trying to be white. You're trying to be God. You understand, you're trying to be your natural God, God state. That's what you're trying to do. But because of the, uh, the intrusion of the illusion that white is right, you think and turn uh, uh, Becky and Karen uh, or, or Stephen and Stephanie on your own people. Learn how to sagaciously steal back your knowledge. Now, I have become a master of this. I literally can go into white spaces, white scholarship, steal all of the information and resources and bring it back, synthesize it, homogenize it, Africanize it, and bring it back to the people as science that you are seeing and experiencing right now. All of us have the ability to do that. And what you're doing and experiencing every single time that you watch a program from Brother Andrew, that is exactly what he is doing. That is, ex and you are getting it because truth recognizes itself. So when truth is given to you, that's why he calls it hidden truth. Truth recognizes it itself. So when he gives it to you, you are automatically looking at it and say, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And the reason that you're saying that is because your, your eyes are being opened like Neo for the first time. You are getting this information and because you're now cleansing yourself of that secondary syndrome of secondary frequency sickness. Use your third eye. Be skeptical and leery. This is very important because this is uh, something that has happened to me. Uh, and so I need to bring this publicly to the, to the community. Be very leery and skeptical of people, white people who are in the DEI business, diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
These are the people <clears throat> who are simply making money off of black pain. Now, some of their scholarship is phenomenal, but they don't want shit to do with black people. And I'm sorry I have to use that language, but I have experienced this at the top level because I've interviewed uh, the top DEI uh, people. I've interviewed the best of the best of them. Now, one of the things that I discovered, one of them told me that they literally prefer to be around African men versus African-American men uh, and African-American women. Why? Because they don't have, because the Eidos, the African descendants of slavery, that story is such a powerful truth that they can't handle the truth and it makes them feel uncomfortable. And they're in the diversity industry. These are the people that are on top, you know, that, will, that, that go into these companies to do diversity training. These are the people who are on television trying to make you feel like you, you matter, <laughs> right? But these are white people. There's one chick that literally gets on television every, doc, every time she's on and says, on behalf of all white people, I'd like to say, I'm sorry. That is the most sick human being I've ever met. I have interviewed this person. I know their, their scholarship is sound, but you've got to look beyond the veil of the sickness that, that these people are, white is not right. There's nothing right about them. So you want to make sure that you're able to have that distinction. Now, to bring yourself up to first frequency, to reveal the first frequency that's already inside of you, you need to create what we call the black room. Uh, brother, I was about to call him doctor because you should be doctor. Dr. Billy Bird, uh, B-Man Billy Bird, uh, produced this concept called the black room. And it's based on the science of dark energy and dark matter, which is where we come from. I think when I was here last time, I talked about they made us afraid of the dark. They made us afraid of the very thing that created us. We, Dr. Sebi always talked, uh, used to tell uh, Brother Kaba that before you could talk about melanin, you got to talk about carbon. Carbon is black. That's why they call us carbon-based entities. We are black, black, blackity black. Everything comes from the dark. Everything comes from dark matter. The, before you can see light, before you can see light, guess what has to be there first? Darkness. So in order for, for light to even be seen, you have to go into the black. And so you need to know how to go into the black room. We're getting ready to put together an entire process of how to maneuver and manipulate the black energies, the black room, the black matter so that you can manifest your reality. This is also what brother Andrew and I are gonna be getting together and doing together when I teach you how to collapse time, right? So they took us, they, when they stole us, they didn't just steal us, they stole our time. They froze us in time. The ice people stole us and froze us in time. We stopped growing, we stopped moving forward. Now we're getting back to the black. This is what Dr. Uh, brother Andrew is doing and dedicated to. So this level of science and truth we're going back, this is called Sankofa. We're going back to come forward. We're gonna to get to the promised land uh, because the promised land has never left us. It's already inside of us, but we're gonna learn how to collapse time so that we can experience, if you will, that heaven literally on earth. Second thing, and the next thing I want you to do is I want you to enroll in our free e-course. So it's absolutely free. Go to firstfrequency.com, put your email in there and you're gonna get a plethora of information on about on and about what first frequency is. Now, also, Brother Andrew and I, we have partnered together and we created this, this webpage called hiddentruthdownloads.com. Hidden Truth Downloads is where you can go and get memberships uh, in first frequency or just uh, our visitors package uh, in first frequency. And Brother Andrew has been very gracious and, and, and becoming an affiliate that we're working with in, our, in, in this concept called Sudden Wealth. As I keep coming back on the platform, I'm gonna be demonstrating all of these things in real time, teaching you and the community how to uh, collapse time, understanding chemicalization, understanding your identity crisis, understanding why you're not able to uh, uh, either create wealth or sustain wealth. And it's because th there's something that has happened to you. That trauma has in, uh, infested inside of you. But because that trauma signal, that racial battle fatigue signal is constantly on you, you're not able to think and sequence your way out of the situation that you're in because you're under a continuous pressure. So we're so brother and Andrew and I are working together to, to, to work with you and teach you on that. Also on Patreon, I'm getting ready to launch live lessons where I'm gonna take even a deeper dive. I did 10 lessons on my YouTube channel uh, called lessonsinshock.com, lessonsinshock.com. 
And those 10 lessons, one of them, uh, which is what you got today, chemicalization and the identity crisis. On Patreon, I'm gonna actually be launching uh, probably in two weeks that uh, where I'm gonna take a deep dive. It's a small group of you, I wanna take you. And I really wanna take a deep, deep dive into each of these 10 lessons, foundational learning lessons, so that you can understand how to manipulate time, how to manipulate matter, uh, how to move yourself out of the situations that you're in, when you get into a situation with the AMU, how to literally uh, m manipulate them uh, and, and process through them. Because once you know who they are and you know who you are, then nobody can tell you what you are. So that's what I want you to say. So again, this is dedicated to this special report download, firstfrequencysuttonwealth.com. You can go there, get the book, download it. Tell me what you think about it. I think it's the, the, the best thing since sliced bread, but you know, you might be vegan. You might not like bread. I don't know. We'll see. So now let's end with our practice of frequency specificity and invoking the law of seven, recite the affirmation of power, uh, prosperity, and protection seven times daily for seven days. And that is, I am one with first frequency. I am one with the first thought idea. I am one with the first born people. I am one with the only one, Ashe, and so it is, Hotep community, Uncle Jobson F. Thank you so much. I am the metaphysical Morpheus. Jeez. <laughs> oh gosh, let me turn up of my oh brother Reverend, you never wound us. You never you wound us, but you never wound us, brother. Wow. Step by step, brothers and sisters, what a class today. And I really want to emphasize, man, what the brother was teaching was science. Yeah? yeah. Some of it sounds a bit harsh. You know what I'm trying to say? And it does sound. And we know living in the UK is a different reality um, aspects. But brothers and sisters, what this brother done tonight, and I think, brother, you can see the responses, brother. Absolutely wow. phenomenal. But no frothing of the you. mouth. It's not an emotional reality brothers and sisters this is deep utter science reverend we bow to you we thank you for thank giving you. us your expertise thank i can't you. wait to literally see you again on this platform but brothers and sisters, please in in the chat room i love the chat room man you'll have your own universe in that chat room <laughs> brothers and sisters you 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 let reverend shock know about his time his wisdom his speciality and what he's done i keep saying that every time he's on this platform he he doesn't know what he's, what he's done to the uk and to the caribbean that that's linked on this platform we know we got our canadian brothers and sisters we know we got our american brothers and sisters. brother reverend we bow to you brother and remember look out Ashe. this is our time yes it is so, oh wow everyone but reverend, i normally go through questions and some of the comments what people have made but i don't need to tonight you you I just want you to be reading, brother, because this is crazy. With Lady Adele um, and Reverend Shocking One Show, maybe I, maybe it was just an atomic bomb that I was just waiting to go. <laughs> yeah, that's nuclear. That's absolutely that's nuclear. Horrible. What's yeah. that, Reverend? That's it. That's nuclear. Lady so Adele and Rev oh, Shock on the, same, on the same day. On the, oh, brother, this is, this is a beautiful path. But everything she said, doesn't it make sense? Everything that she said was 100% on. I'm and, just bringing the other side of it to make it up so you can have a deeper understanding, overstanding of it and understanding of it. Oh, but she's absolutely correct. But that's why they do what they do. Fantastic. Brother George said this earlier. Queen Adele, I truly loved your presentation, especially today. The way you went into subtly into the current, current situation without making any direct accusations or instigations, masterfully took into a problem and gave us a clear overview and understand of what is exactly happening before our very eyes. I just praise you to the most highest as one of the best teachers I ever had, along with the Honorable Minister, Louis Farrakhan. Lord mm. gosh, I've never read that before. And then when it comes to our brother, our oh, Reverend Shock, brother, oh gosh, I, I, I don't know which, which comment to read out that sums you up, brother, because People have just gone crazy. They've gone crazy, brother. And um, just to let people know um, that tonight's show has been recorded and will be released. I know many people are saying, brother Andrew, man, 
you're not you're not sharing the shows out, man. Don't worry, don't worry, man. We've got we've got things lined up, and um, we know last week's show. Um, for those of you who may not know, if you go to my website, if you go to my website, brothers and sisters, um, theinvestigator.org.uk, and I will show you some good news tonight. That I know many people are saying, Redford, you're dropping so many bombs. I can't, I can't keep up with you. I can't keep up with you. But don't worry. Brothers and sisters, on my website, theinvestigator.org.uk, if you go into it now these days, you see services. Under services, you see presentations. And when you click on presentations, yeah, now you're going to start seeing videos that you can go and see. <laughs> Yeah, we've got all the shows getting lined up. So, rev all right. So now, bada, bada. Yeah. I know you lot been here. All right. So, brothers and sisters, go to my website. So, I know, Reverend, you did not play tonight, brother. I don't know how you're going to follow tonight. I'm being serious. We still got four. I got so much content for the family, yeah. man. I'm, I got so much draw. You know, this is the thing. We all have to get on this same level of information. And what I love about your platform, man, and how you roll is you have uh, the best thought leaders and change agents that are, are, are in what we call TEPASEP. It's absolutely amazing. the accurate uh, knowing by using the correct method. It's absolutely amazing that, that I, I could have never predicted that Lady Adele would, 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 would present what she was, I'm looking at that, I'm saying, well, I don't even need to come on after after Lady Adele, right? I, there's no reason for me to even be here because I'm still reeling from that. But to be able to compliment that uh, and and for us to be able to receive that, uh, what you're doing, brother. Uh, no, uh, but I, I don't brother, want to take no praises, brother. This is your time. We've got Sister Sylvia that just said, thank you so much with pure kisses. Sister Kemet, which is one of our great presenters in the UK, she says, he's awesome. I love him. Um, oh, Sister shit. Elon Ross says, this was some serious SHIT. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Antonia uh, Valentine says, thank you, my king. Um, yeah. Prudencia Wood says, believe. Doreen Fenton says, amazing power. Jocelyn Joseph says, you just rocked the house tonight. And he goes on and on and on. Brother, may Allah continue to bless you brother. You, and, brother and as i said this is a platform of learning that's what i want people to know yeah you don't have to agree with every single thing that every single guest comes and say but what you will agree on is that and you cannot deny you learned a master class you learned a master class tonight last week and next week as well you've just sat down and had a master teacher teach you and what i love about reverend shock it will give you the names he will give you dates. He will give you places. He will give you books. So this ain't, you know, nothing personal. Right. Go away Absolutely. And study, brothers and sisters. And right. never allow anyone to convert you. You convert yourself by your studying the principles that have been taught to you. You convert yourself with your own wisdom. Because I'm saying to you, what you heard tonight from this brother, I challenge you to go back and, 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 and say you're lying. I challenge you. <laughs> yeah. I challenge you. <laughs> yeah. So, right. brother, brother Reverend, once again, and one, uh, two, one other thing, brother. I mentioned that during the birthdays today is Dr. Linda Jeffries' birth, uh, 84th, 84th oh. birthday, January 19th. So, I wanted to give a shout out to Dr. Linda Jeffries, uh, 84 years uh, of of science that he has given us uh, the glory. So, love you, Dr. J. Uh, if, you, if, if ever you see this, also I want to send a shout out to Maxine and Patrick Brandt for introducing me to you because if it wasn't for them i, I don't know I, I don't know if they're in the audience i'm sure they are yeah, uh, but sure there. but pi ratio uh and and the grant family uh q maya maya and enrique i love you uh thank you so much for introducing me to brother andrew muhammad um brother just before we go let me we, we have to go now uh, monica says reverend shock we can't thank you enough this uh, is so powerful may the most high Bless and keep you. Victoria says, mind bending. Not sure if I grasped it all. I don't think any of us grasped everything that the brother said tonight. We have to go back and um, play it again. So the replay will be coming up. Sister Jackie says, found my spiritual family tonight. 
I realized mm. that I am the right, I'm in the right place. Mm. Pure love to Lady Adele and I'm Reverend Shock. So brother, you know, I, I, I can't, I, I don't have to carry on and on. <laughs> I just I just love you, man. I support you and everything. Oh, no, love you, my king. Love you, my king. So, yeah. brothers and sisters, just as we go, we nearly we still got the 400 of you on the platform. Don't forget what we said today about Nubian Red. Um, let's try and save the leg of her son. Yeah, if we can raise up some money for this sister, um, it could mean literally a young brother in Jamaica keeping his leg. Okay, so please don't forget hit that um button donate to our sister okay understand that next week's show brothers and sisters oh my gosh jamaica barbados trinidad is going to be in the house is the caribbean calling and we've been sponsored by why dream travel so brothers and sisters don't forget next week same place spread the word spread the word and don't forget this friday dr strange we're going metaphysical, brothers and sisters. Tickets have gone like crazy, but you know what? We'll always make space in the inn. Lady Adele is going to be doing a special presentation called What is Reality? What is Reality? I may have said it wrong, but it's on that kind of theme, okay? So Dr. Strange will be with us next. Uh, on this coming Friday, Popcorn Friday, is Dr. Strange. So brothers and sisters, Brothers and sisters, I thank you so much for being here tonight. I want to give a shout out to my, my nephew, Issa Rashid. It's his birthday today. Brat, love you, my king. Your credit, credit, 24-year-old brother. I know when I see a brother like that, I know our gen next generation safe. So, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Andrew Mohammed greeting you in the greeting words of peace. We say in our in one of our original languages of paradise and foresight, and that is assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, walk straight, be good. And remember, you're not black because you're cursed, you're black because you're first. One love. Neither beast, 